This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, uh, all of you. We are going to start the course uh, within one minute. Okay, so we'll be waiting for others to join. So my voice is audible to all of you, right? So if you are facing any difficulty, uh, please let me know. So uh, we'll start the session. Uh, good evening, all of you. Uh, today we are going to learn about uh, machine learning algorithms uh, basics, and we will see few applications of various machine learning algorithms. So in the last session, okay, uh, means yesterday, we learned about what is machine learning. So we discussed about uh, how to train uh, a machine to think and act like us. Remember, uh, machines can also think. Machines also can think. This is the review of last class. Okay, those who were present yesterday, fine. Okay, you can recollect. So machines can think, machines can act. They can take decisions. They can take decisions. So this is possible, okay, once you try the machine once you give learning learning to your machine machine can automatically think can act can make decisions on its own without any human intervention so here you can see so many machines right all these machines can take decisions on its own once you train this machine generally machines follow instructions but the machine learning concept makes it very simple to machines to take decisions on its own. Okay, remember machine learning is a tool to train a particular machine to act on its own. Okay, so that is actually machine learning. So we are going to uh, learn about various ways how we can train a particular machine okay so the machine learning algorithms are different ways on how you can try in a particular machine so you learn okay uh, if you try in your machine it can act like a human being okay so machine learning is converting a data into knowledge experience so because without experience we cannot make decisions 
so we have to give experience to machine okay if machine gets experience it also can take decisions it also can act on data okay that's the whole idea about machine learning so uh, machine learning is a tool to convert information into knowledge okay this is what we have learned in the previous session okay so we have seen uh, different types of machine learning algorithms supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforced learning okay so we have seen a uh, difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning okay so uh, we are going to see uh, in detail about supervised learning and unsupervised learning today so uh, you have seen supervised learning where uh, generally uh, we have to train a machine using data okay so label data will be feeding to your machine so that machine will understand right so all of you can hear my voice right uh, somebody saying I, I am unable to hear your voice all of you can hear my voice right yeah so uh, please reply in the chat okay if you have any problem if you are unable to hear my voice or if my voice is not clear if it is not audible please let me know okay i think uh, no one has problem okay right okay so supervisor learning so uh, yesterday we learned about supervisor learning supervisor learning is very simple so we learn so many things from our teachers parents right so generally kids will be trained on various aspects okay so generally parents will be giving time to the kids maybe teachers will be giving training to the kids on various aspects so that kids will learn and uh, act accordingly okay so for example you know generally a kid uh, at the age of five years may not know what is apple what is banana what is orange but if you uh, you know explain to him okay about banana or apple he will learn right so you will be showing apple okay and you will be saying okay the color of apple is red uh, it's in round shape the taste is good then it will understand okay uh, this is apple okay so kids will learn through training right we train this to uh, you know uh, kids so that is actually called as supervised learning so means there will be some supervisor teacher to teach the kid okay and to teach the kid we need to have some material that material is called as you know data okay so generally in supervised learning we need trainer and then we need data okay we need data so trainer will be using data to teach a particular machine okay that is called as supervised learning okay so already we have seen yesterday about this so just giving you uh, the review of uh, this okay so the best example we have seen yesterday okay teach the label data so if uh, you know uh, apple is red and its color is round so if you have given this data okay these are the features we call these are the features this is the label remember these are the features okay this is the label now what you are saying if the features are red and circle then the output must be apple so inputs are red and circle then output must be apple the same way you can say uh, you know if the color is yellow and not a circle the output is banana so these are called as actually features so generally the features and lay both you know outputs and features will be labeled okay so you'll be giving it label data once you try uh, your model automatically when you give red color red color uh, round shape easily your model can identify that it is apple apple okay so we are giving a relationship between features and this particular response okay here the features are red circle where the response is apple okay so there is some relationship between these two we are establishing a relationship okay so based on this actually uh, supervisor learning works right so we have seen this example okay so i am going further because uh, we are going to learn a few examples okay so those who are absent yesterday 
so you'll be learning this in uh, extra class okay if you require i'll be providing extra class on this uh, basic concepts okay so uh, we'll be seeing the example for uh, classification so uh, supervisor learning uh, is classified uh, there are two types in class uh, supervisor learning remember uh, there are two types of supervisor learning algorithms one is classification another one is regression remember there are two types of supervisor learning one is classification algorithms another one is regression algorithms okay so classification is generally you know uh, classifying whether uh, today's weather is hot weather or cold weather so simple example is you know classifying whether today hot or cold or classifying okay whether the, the email uh, that came maybe spam email or not spam email so these are all actually classification problems okay in classification generally response will be a discrete value response will be discrete whereas in regression regression will be uh, you most of the time you will see in sales prediction or you may be seeing in forecasting weather forecast temperature prediction or you know for example stock prices prediction these are all comes under regression okay in regression generally the response is continuous the output is continuous whereas in classification the output is discrete values discrete values for example uh, you have three types of you know uh, uh, fruits you have a uh, box full of fruits that box contains three types of fruits oranges apples bananas okay when you classify them you will get only three groups right what are the three groups you will be getting one is oranges group apples group bananas group okay you will have only three outputs okay so you have only discrete output discrete values output okay so in classification generally we will have discrete values output whereas in regression we will have continuous value output what is continuous value output for example if you see temperature prediction temperature prediction so you want to uh, predict tomorrow's temperature at 4 pm what might be temperature tomorrow at 4 pm the same time so to predict the temperature temperature may be 28 degrees centigrade or maybe 29 or maybe 35 okay so you cannot say one single value or two discrete values so these are continuous values it might be any value so you have infinite number of possibilities remember you have infinite number of possibilities the temperature value can be anything we don't know right so the, these are an infinite number of possibilities whereas in classification the output will have only a limited number of possibilities limited number of possibilities means for example you know you have temperature data here this temperature data if you classify you can classify this either as hot weather or cold weather if you apply for classification techniques so you can actually classify uh, entire temperature data into two things either hot weather or cold weather okay you can do that whereas if you see the regression problem in regression you cannot say hot or cold but what you say is you are going to see the exact value the model will say the exact temperature values okay so these temperature values may be anything okay we don't know so because uh, you know the uh, you know uh, in regression as we are predicting uh, predicting continuous values the values might be anything okay remember so most of the cases generally we see classification okay in real time applications most of the examples will be classification uh, regression uh, applications will be limited applications there are very limited applications for regression remember regression may be for prediction okay most of the time regression will be used in iot uh, products for example it will be used along with iot also uh, you know for example you want to predict soil moisture for example so you want to design smart irrigation system okay if you want to design a smart irrigation system in such case you have to predict the soil moisture right so in such cases okay you can use uh, regression technique temperature prediction you can use regression technique so regression technique is useful when you want to predict the future value of 
the present variable so you can do that so all of you clear right what is uh, you know the so classification and what is regression okay you know the differences between classification and regression okay so both are uh, under supervised learning only okay so in both cases we need inputs as well as outputs okay without having both inputs and outputs we cannot classify or produce forecasted values okay remember that so i'll be explaining you uh, about classification we'll be seeing the examples okay so we'll start today's class now okay so i'll be explaining you example mail inbox filter okay mail inbox filter okay so generally when you're using gmail or yahoo okay or any other mails what you will observe is so you will have uh, inbox inbox and there is also a spam spam some of the mails may be going to spam why spam okay so there is a filter used by your uh, mail server okay mail server will be having this particular you know a filter which will be filtering spam and non spam 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 and non spam so non spam is also called as uh, ham okay so spam ham okay so now spam is unwanted email okay or uh, mail which is not important to us okay maybe the mail came from advertising or the mail uh, which is for marketing or the mail uh, which is sent for some advertising okay these are all actually uh, spam emails okay so we don't want to see the spam emails sometimes our inboxes will be full with the marketing mails right so now uh, you know generally uh, gmail and all you know mail servers what they are trying to do is they are actually uh, having filters which will filter whether a particular mail is spam or not spam okay so how they are going to do that okay first they have to use a machine learning algorithm to do this okay how how they are going to use the machine learning algorithm okay you need inputs you need inputs as well as outputs so here what should be the output so simple question so all of you are listening right so my simple question is what are the outputs here what should be the output of a particular system here we are we want to design a simple uh, machine learning algorithm to find whether a particular email is spam or not spam so how to find it anyone please tell me how to do that yes so you have a particular algorithm so in this algorithm we are providing inputs as well as outputs so inputs and output outputs together is the experience remember inputs and outputs are together is called as experience okay so experience is very simple okay if you have both uh, you know input data as well as input data plus output data is called as knowledge or experience okay so for example if i give uh, this input output must be this okay so if you know this exactly in supervised learning it is very easy uh, to train the model okay so in spam filtering what should be the input and what should be the output so input will be email right you received email so received email should contain right uh, sender's mail address sender mail id subject subject of the email and then you will have some message body okay these three parameters your uh, you know email uh, that you have received may contain one is sender's email address subject and then the message in the in you know uh, body so output output should be either spam or not spam spam or not spam so here uh, what we have to do is we have to combine this data what do we have to combine sender address subject message so sender address is a text text data subject is also a text data message is also a text data 
okay so we'll be adding all these uh, three together so this entire thing is a text okay this text what we are trying to do is if the text contains contains some advertisement words maybe sometimes advertisement words if the email address is not from a person person then classify it as spam so you'll be writing uh, a code in such a way that okay it will try to understand whether a particular mail is spam or non spam so first we have to train we have to train if this email came from a, per a particular person it should be spam you have to tell the computer otherwise computer won't understand spam or not spam you have to tell the computer whether this is a spam email or not spam okay you have to give at the same time computer also uses its own algorithm uh, to differentiate whether a particular email is a spam email or non spam email okay once you give this understanding means once you try in your model whether a given email is a spam mail or non spam email so uh, this computer will uh, remember that okay so once you try in this model this model will uh, you know remember whatever uh, you know that you have talked to that system so next time when the email comes to this particular system what happens you know automatically it can identify and classify it as spam or non spam for example if any new email comes so this is called as training this is called as training after training we will use the system now your model is ready this model is ready okay so now what you will do whenever a new email comes so it will be received by your system and your system will try to separate them either as spam or non spam okay so this problem is called as classification how many outputs we have here how many outputs two outputs right so either either spam or non spam yeah excellent so i got answer so you can give answers okay uh, it will be very interactive when you give answers in the chat so that i will understand that you are uh, uh, getting you know clear about the concepts okay right so it's a very simple thing so this is called as classification okay so classification uh, there are different algorithms for classification okay so recommendations how many of you know recommendations okay so when you see or uh, watch some uh, movie uh, recently automatically based on this movie for example if you see here the west wing is the movie watched by somebody automatically you know netflix so recommended these movies based on the watcher history so it will recommend okay this is also a uh, supervised learning problem okay so it will automatically remembers okay so and then it will recommend to us so there are so many uh, uh, systems like this okay i will show you one simple example okay uh, so that you will understand so all of you can see uh, the screen right all of you can see the screen okay here it is my uh, linkedin uh, uh, page okay this is my linkedin page uh, here if you see here okay so this is my network okay in this network if i see uh, i have total 2485 connections okay so here uh, there are two requests to join my network so if you see here here linkedin is actually uh, giving some suggestions to me okay what are the suggestions people you may know from iit bombay okay because i have studied from iit mumbai so it is saying okay there are some people from iit mumbai you can make friends with them okay so uh, this is one suggestion i got another suggestion people you may know with similar roles like founder ceo okay these are the roles okay you can make friendship with them so and then you know uh, if you see here recommended people for you recommended people for you how these recommendations actually linkedin is doing for me how it is able to do it on what basis actually it is recommending these people to me any guess yes any guess ashwini satisai grishma kiran megana manasa meena prudvi anyone so how how it is able to recommend these people for me is there any criteria it is following yes i got some answer in the chat based on our profile yeah excellent one is profile yeah profile is not enough 
profile see uh, linkedin tracks my likes so i like some posts i may like some uh posts i may share some posts okay so i'll be interacting every day with the linkedin okay so it's based on how i am actually interacting with the linkedin okay so somebody saying subscription some some are saying working area some are saying information and skills okay so it's based on different parameters okay so here if you see uh, profiles and likes and then uh, subscriptions also okay so based on then uh, my uh, areas for example i have posted so many uh, posts so far so based on those posts also it will be making recommendations because it will remember everything that i do on the linkedin so it knows everything about me that's why it is able to create my profile so internally it has my profile about my posts about my likes about my watch history so everything it has so now what it will try to do is simple so it will create a profile and it will try to match other profiles which are relevant to my profile and it will make recommendations for me okay so how many of you are interested to build such a system are you interested to build a system like this can you do so there are so many things you can do oh, okay so if you are interested to do okay we are going to do such a system in this course okay so actually we are going to design a recommendation system uh, in this course okay so it is very useful and you can check with the real time applications okay so we are going to compete with the google okay so all of you ready to compete with the google okay because i am helping you to uh, build a system to uh, compete with the google we will try to improve okay so if you see here uh, this is another uh, recommendation system if you see here movie similar to avatar movie similar to avatar so if i uh, type movie similar to avatar in google search engine so uh, it will recommends people also search for see uh, this is also a one uh, recommendation system okay so it is actually called as collaborative filtering collaborative filtering for example i searched for avatar so somebody uh, searched for the similar movies like avatar 2 battle angel guardians of the galaxy aliens these are the different movies okay maybe so see uh, now google is actually suggesting uh, the movies which are very uh, similar to avatar okay so in this course we are going to design movie recommendation system okay and we are going to check our system with the same google uh you know movie similar to uh, uh our movie name so we are going to uh, test our system with this okay so and you can apply this for different things like recommendations uh, you know for uh, restaurants zomato is using recommendations right swiggy is using recommendations how they are doing that okay so we are going to explore even amazon is doing recommendations for their products okay so even flipkart is using recommendations so you can also do that okay you can you can also design your own recommendation engine to uh, do recommendations so this is purely based on classification technique this is also a classification technique right so you can see this so uh, so far you have seen supervised learning in supervised learning we have uh, two techniques one is uh, regression technique another one is classification technique so we can uh, do lot of things uh, using classification as well as regression remember classification generally you will have discrete uh, output whereas in regression you will have continuous uh, output variable okay remember these two differences uh, for both of them we need to provide the labeled data okay so you need to give the labeled data for both uh, regression problems as well as for classification problems so in supervised learning remember what we are trying to do is we will be providing data remember this is supervised learning this is unsupervised learning so there is a difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning in supervised learning we provide labels means we say this is orange this is banana okay to the system we will explain everything about uh, banana as uh, about uh, you know apple as well as orange to the system so the system will understand okay if these features comes automatically it will identify that it is apple this is orange but uh, but in unsupervised learning uh, we don't provide labels 
labels okay remember we don't provide labels in unsupervised learning okay you have given data but this data doesn't have any labels okay you don't feed it as a apple or banana but system should understand what type of data you have given system itself has to learn from the data okay so unsupervised learning is you know uh, the learning where you know it will automatically try to understand the underlying patterns how data is you know related to uh, uh, other data okay so it's purely based on uh, you know relationships among the data but we are not providing uh, any labels okay so this is the difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning so remember in supervised learning we provide labeled data in unsupervised learning we provide unlabeled data and system has to learn and it has to understand through a modeling about the given data so that is actually uh, about unlabeled data uh, most of the cases in health data health data health if you want to work with health or genetical genes uh, modifications okay so these are all problems where uh, sometimes you cannot uh, label them so in such cases generally we use unsupervised learning where it will try to so for example if you want to predict about the cancer type of cancer okay so you have data but you don't know uh, what type of cancer it is in such cases you can use this uh, unsupervised learning to predict the types of cancers okay so you can do that uh, okay we'll see our uh, example so this is a very simple example funny okay so for example uh, she has a dog okay so this dog uh, she knows uh, this dog because she is living with this dog this is the family dog okay so suppose uh, this uh, pinky suppose this dog name is pinky so this uh, this uh, girl knows about this pinky because she was playing uh, every day with this uh, dog because it stays in their home okay so now uh, this uh, small girl knows okay so pinky will have ears and four legs okay so it barks okay loudly so all these features uh, this small girl knows okay because she is experiencing though no one uh, told about these features but she experienced it right so uh, next step once you know what happened uh, there is one uncle came okay to their house so there was a family friend so he brought another dog okay with him okay to their home now uh, you know uh, the girl uh, small girl you know aged below five years so uh, is it possible for the kid to understand that this is a, a dog is that possible is that possible yes remember so she knows from the past experience from the past experience she gained experience about dog dog has four legs okay uh, it barks so she knows how a uh, dog will be so now uh, she saw a new dog okay so now uh, the features of their family dog are very similar to uh, this family friend uh, dog okay so she will compare so she will try to compare internally and will she she will identify okay this is also a dog it is very similar to dog she can say that okay so this is called as actually uh, unsupervised learning though she don't know okay she, but she remembered the features okay now this animal is also same as like this animal so this must be a dog okay so though she don't know the name but she can identify these two are similar these two are similar category those two are under same category she can identify that is called as actually unsupervised learning okay through the experience she was able to understand okay so that is called as unsupervised learning right so uh, you have learned what is unsupervised learning so here the unsupervised learning is simple act without anyone's supervision or anyone's guidance here there is no guide no guide or no supervisor to guide but still uh, this model can understand try to understand without a guide without a trainer or without a teacher okay this machine can 
get trained on the unlabeled data and can act based on the given data that is actually unsupervised learning so you understood right what is the difference between unsupervised learning and supervised learning in unsupervised learning uh, you don't have guide you don't have labels whereas in supervised learning you have a guide at the same time you have labeled data right so all of you clear right uh, about the concepts supervised learning and unsupervised learning so if you have any doubts please let me know yes any doubts yeah unsupervised learning is very useful uh, when uh, if you don't know much about the data okay if you don't have much knowledge about the data but you want to understand uh, what exactly you know the data patterns for example you have some data points like this okay this is the graph okay so so you have these data points but now you want to understand something about it okay so you want to understand what are the underlying patterns in the data in such cases uh, it is very useful to use unsupervised learning okay so unsupervised learning is preferred where uh, there is no much information about the given data okay the model will itself try to understand uh, you know through uh, different you know algorithms like it can use clustering techniques or classification techniques or association techniques we are going to discuss about the various uh, techniques available in unsupervised learning so there are like techniques called as clustering or association where anomaly detection so these are all actually comes under unsupervised learning so we are going to discuss about them so see uh, in unsupervised learning we have uh, techniques like clustering clustering means you have data so we don't know much about this data but you have these data points now these data points are clustered based on some features so these are all made as a one cluster cluster one this is a cluster two cluster three so we made three clusters okay so these three clusters are you know made as a clusters based on some relationship based on some features matching features matching okay it's very simple so this is called as actually clustering okay so same way there is another thing called as anomaly detection what is anomaly okay so generally anomaly is for example you have points like this data points okay you got data these are the data points now there is a one point here which is unusable okay so generally you never expected this point okay so this is called as anomaly or outlier 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 or anomaly so this outlier anomaly detection is very useful for uh, water leakage detection to find water leakages or to find gas leakage gas leakage or to identify energy consumption energy consumption or if you want to find credit card misuse credit card fraud for finding credit card fraud also it will be very useful okay if you use anomaly detection okay so how you actually credit card fraud what is credit card fraud every day you are using a uh, hundred thousand rupees per day using your credit card but uh, you know suddenly one day uh, there was about one lakh rupees being used okay so this is actually generally data which is unusual data okay which is actually not in the limits okay so this is called as outlier so automatically when there is a point which here which is far from uh, the given data points is identified then it will say okay there may be some fraud so so the bank will ask you okay did you do this uh, you know uh, transaction or somebody has done it please let us know so that they can identify uh, whether there is a fraud or not okay uh, this is a credit card you know fraud detection system also will be used based on anomaly clear or uh, what is anomaly right so these are the three techniques so last technique is association okay this is a very good example okay so for example you know what is association bread and jam okay if you buy bread automatically you buy jam or butter right in general in general okay when you buy cell phone you will be buying another item what is that maybe maybe 
a pouch or maybe screen guard screen guard maybe pouch pouch right so generally you'll have uh, this is called as association association okay so uh, in so unsupervised learning uh, we use generally association technique also how actually one uh, their particular feature is associated with other okay how one item is associated with other item okay so this is called as association okay there are so many things generally we do uh, for association okay so if you see amazon amazon uses association for recommending various products for us when you buy a cell phone it will automatically ask you to buy screen guard or it will be asking you to buy pouch or maybe sim card it may be asking you to buy sim card right when you buy laptop it will be recommending you to buy so what it will recommend yes laptop bag generally uh, they ask you to buy bag also it is good to buy bag so many of you uh, so many of the customers bought bag with the laptop so uh, this is called as association so e-commerce websites are using this association right yeah so give example so association all of you please give one example for the association yeah you can type in the chart i'll be observing the chart so right association give uh, item one item to how they are related just give uh, one simple uh, statement here yes i am waiting for your answers please do that fast right book and pen excellent kiran yes again i'm waiting for others to respond okay okay play store when you are uh, downloading play store okay okay process with processor fan when you buy processor it will also recommend you to buy fan for the processor excellent still there are so many people right deep the okay when you buy mobile phone it will ask you to buy phone charger okay good what else yeah i'm waiting for others to uh, you know respond yes table chair excellent relation rajalakshmi excellent uh vinay kumar ac and stabilizer excellent sairam phone and sim tv and stand excellent so people are doing making business okay using this simple association principle okay so see uh, most of the companies are generating 30 to 40 percent income only through these machine learning recommendations do you believe it excellent uh, grishma internet connection and wi-fi router okay so very good so when you are uh, you know taking internet connection automatically they will recommend you to buy wi-fi router yeah when you buy shoes automatically it will recommend you to buy socks excellent so uh, right clustering adwords again okay see uh adwords are generally uh book and pen excellent right fine so google adwords may google adwords how many of you know google adwords so google adwords are generally you know if you want to uh, advertise on google for example you know google will be advertising in uh, you know uh, in search engines you will see so many ads when you read something there you will see small ad google ad okay these are all actually google ads how google ads will appear you know appear it's based on different categories okay for example you can choose age age group age is a one cluster place is one cluster okay you can choose actual places when you do advertising okay so you can choose places ages okay and then uh, it will actually for example when uh, you know it is actually so this uh, actually during the advertising so age place and then adwords and then adwords these these plays very important role okay uh, you know age place location adwords and all these are the parameters while actually uh, placing an uh, advertisement on google actually they ask us to give all these uh, you know uh, parameters so we give generally ages places adwords so what is adword adword is simply for example uh, i want to promote uh, machine learning for example machine learning so how student thinks we have to understand okay what are the terms so in google if he said yes they should find only this advertisement okay to find that we have to create different adwords so these adwords are made as a clusters like for example internship 
so there are so many terms which are related to internship so internship will be one cluster where you will have different words okay same way uh, you know machine learning machine learning will have different words related to it okay likewise you will have different clusters where uh, your ad will be uh, displayed okay this is called as actually i know google adwords clustering so we'll be discussing more about clustering in the next uh, classes okay so this is one example we can use uh, google adwords is a one example okay this is very good for uh, digital marketing okay so you understood what is uh, unsupervised learning now right so uh, somit yeah excellent somit so unsupervised learning is very useful one where, where uh, you don't have the labels about a particular data means the data uh, doesn't have proper information okay then uh, you know you need to use unsupervised learning okay so you have three uh, important techniques one is clustering technique anomaly detection another one is association technique okay so it's a very simple right so classifying so here we are making clusters or groups okay so you have fed uh, this data to the system automatically system will make clusters you don't provide names but still it can make clusters and it will name cluster a cluster b cluster c okay so it will be making the names okay it will be uh, having cluster a cluster b cluster c okay once you feed this particular one to the system automatically it says okay this is in cluster a it can identify okay so see uh, we provided sample data it is raw data but you do you did not give the labels to it okay we can give labels also right you can provide the names for each uh, you know uh, here item but you did not provide uh, the names or labels but still your system can uh, make them clusters based on their features right so in unsupervised learning we have different techniques like you know you can use k-means clustering okay hierarchical cluster analysis and then principal component analysis which is actually statistical method so these are all actually uh, algorithms we are going to learn in this class we will see in detail about these algorithms in the next class okay remember in unsupervised learning we are going to learn about k-mean and then hierarchical cluster analysis and then principal component analysis okay so applications there are so many applications like discover underlying patterns okay how uh, actually given data is uh, okay you can understand okay generally in health analytics or energy analytics you can use uh, this unsupervised learning so and then you will get very useful insights about the given data okay so uh, most of the analytics companies are using unsupervised learning okay uh, the applications like recommendation systems okay most of the recommendation systems uses both supervised learning as well as unsupervised learning also it depends on the uh, given uh, you know uh, uh, problem okay uh, is for example if you want to uh, recommend based on the watch history then that is actually uh, yeah we are going to yes so what is the importance of machine learning in yes i will be telling okay see uh, machine learning is very useful in all the fields in all fields it may be ec or cse or mechanical engineering or civil engineering so each uh, branch has its own you know uh, applications for example if you see uh, electrons and communication engineering suppose see uh, machine learning is not just for csc or uh, it it's not just software okay so uh, please all of you please keep it in uh, mute okay so all of you you can keep uh, your mics in mute because uh, we may be getting noise okay please all of you keep uh, your mic in the mute okay and then we will see for electrical also electrical engineering first we will start with electrical engineering okay so electrical engineering for example you have a motor machine machine means generally in electrical engineering motors motor there are different types of motors right dc motor ac motor so there are so many motors industrial motors also there people are using industrial motors okay now you want to predict 
about this uh, DC motor you are using this motor but you don't know when to repair this motor when to repair this motor now your task is identifying when to repair this particular machine particular motor okay so how you can predict so based on data okay about this particular motor motor data what is the motor data so you will have vibration vibration data body temperature of the motor body temperature of motor motor and then you can check the current measurements also current measurements current in the motor okay so all these you know uh, values you are gathering this data you have sensors suppose you are measuring vibration uh, using vibration sensor you are using uh, temperature sensor to measure body temperature of the motor you are using current sensor to measure the current so you have all the data right now after having this data now what you're trying to do is you based on this because remember the motor uh, you know uh, whether a motor is getting repaired or not is depends on some, these parameters vibration parameters body temperature you know uh, parameter and then current you know taken by this motor if the motor is not working properly then you know motor might take some more current okay so uh, based on these parameters what you can do is you can use some machine learning algorithm to predict whether this machine is going to get repaired so so that you can get in advance uh, suggestion that you should uh, you know take this motor to a particular you know repair shop and uh, repair it so that is one simple example i can tell uh, for electrical engineering so all of you clear right uh, example right so okay so another example you can use so most of the uh, industries are using today industries are using energy analytics energy analytics energy analytics what is energy analytics see uh, generally uh, industries pays their power per monthly uh, power bills may be lakhs or in crores lakhs or crores of rupees they used to pay as power bill okay so because uh, they may be consuming a lot of energy Okay, electrical energy because of that they have to pay huge power bills lakhs or crores now they generally you know reducing these lakhs or crores of rupees may be the profit for their company remember sometime this may be the profit for their company okay so profit generally will be you know generally saving cost will be the profit saving cost will be the profit so they have to reduce this energy consumption so that they can reduce the power bill okay so that they can increase the profit so in such cases what they have to do is they are using smart energy meters smart energy meter smart energy meters so one industry may use 100 energy meters maybe because uh, they want to keep every room or every um, you know process may be monitored through smart energy meters all these energy meters are collecting data about power consumption and they will give this data to the server where you will be analyzing the data based on this analysis you will say okay so in the manufacturing unit one unit one is consuming more why why uh, manufacturing unit one is consuming more so there is a question now after analyzing you will get questions okay why manufacturing unit one is consuming more when compared to the manufacturing unit two both are the same equipment is same everything setup is same but why consumption is high then they will check for you know uh, the equipment in the uh, units and they can try to reduce this energy consumption or they may ask the manager why uh, this is high uh, in your uh, unit so that manager will try to optimize energy in their particular plant so that they can reduce the energy consumption it is possible through this data smart energy data so use smart energy data and apply some machine learning algorithms to understand about power consumption okay so this is called as energy analytics and then uh, for uh, ec electronics and communication engineer for example you, if you are an electronics and communication engineer so uh, there is a field called as image processing and there is a field called as iot 
and there is a field called as IIoT and there is a field called as AIoT and there is a field called as industrial automation industrial automation uh, I am sorry if I am devi deviated okay but uh, there are few questions I have to answer because these are the beginning classes I have to answer their questions okay that's why I'm giving answers to these questions okay so all of you okay right uh, Nitish those who are uh, uh, already know about uh, these things okay please uh, be on hold okay listen to these examples so that you will also get some understanding okay right so here if you see iot is internet of things right so generally uh, iot is internet of things so use internet of the we generally use uh, internet of things to connect things to the internet things to internet my question is why to connect things to the internet so in industries there are so many things already connected to the internet for example in uh, europe or you know usa water meters are connected to internet power meters are connected to internet okay so why they are connecting all these stuff to the internet see every day they, they want to monitor water consumption they want to monitor power consumption they want to monitor soil present soil moisture present in their field they can monitor soil moisture also so they are monitoring continuously they are monitoring various parameters okay so you are collecting data what you are exactly doing is collecting data you are collecting water rate consumption data you are collecting power consumption data you are collecting soil moisture data so you are collecting different parameters so after collecting what you will be doing that okay so uh, generally uh, we collect data real time data will be collected but how you are going to use this collected data then machine learning comes so you have to apply machine learning algorithms to the collected data so that you will get useful insights useful insights you can predict about soil moisture you can predict about water consumption you can predict about power consumption okay so you can do a lot of things once you have data so this data can be generated only through iot remember so generally uh, e-commerce websites amazon flipkart so e-commerce websites even computers generates data okay so there are so many websites generating data but iot data is very useful okay in today's scenario because you are you know you know uh, digital transformation is taking a faster phase because everything is becoming digital okay so in such cases it is very important to connect uh, things to the internet at the same time so once you connect things to the internet next step is you have to use the generated data okay so we are going to use the generated data by using our machine learning algorithms okay in this course we are going to uh, see uh, temperature prediction smart refrigerator also smart refrigerator means you can make a refrigerator smart you can make a thermostat smart so everything can be smart because uh, devices can also think on their own remember a smart you know refrigerator can think uh, whether there are eggs or not in the freeze it can actually order uh, automatically if freeze finds that there is no milk packet in the uh, freeze automatically freeze can uh, you know make uh, direct order on the you know some e-commerce uh, portal it can do that so there are some you know products already existing they are doing that so even you know uh, your freeze can understand okay uh, you know uh, the quality of the products present in the refrigerator and that is actually application uh, for ECE right clear right for ECE is that clear yeah Prudvi is that clear okay yeah so uh, we are going to see more examples as we go on okay so because uh, see try to understand everything so you can apply ml to everything so especially for ece you have very good scope uh, to use a machine learning for electrical ece because you can apply for your own field what you have learned you can apply for your own field that's a very good thing you can do okay so even for mechanical engineers so what are the other branches uh, you know i don't know all the branches here 
but you can specify if if your branch is not uh, you know covered here anyone uh, with other branches other than ec triple e and cse please let me know so that i will give example for your branch also okay so because i do i want to uh, uh, give example for all the branches if you are present in this uh, room okay right next uh, there is another very good example is face detection face recognition face recognition actually a uh, technique generally most of you know uh, the systems are using for example mobile phones you are seeing this face recognition even laptops you are seeing face recognition even security systems having face recognition so this actual face embedding see try to understand face recognition is algorithm but you have to add this algorithm into mobile adding one algorithm into your mobile you know mobile is electronics right electronic device okay laptop is an electronic device maybe security system is electronic device right some other you know for example doorbell video doorbell is an electronic device okay so now we want to add this face recognition algorithm to your doorbell so this is actually uh, an electronics and communication engineer project where he will combine face recognition with doorbell okay so that's a, another scenario where you can use uh, machine learning algorithms for electrical engineers i hope uh, i have answered uh, your requirements okay so i will go further okay so in unsupervised learning this is one example water leakage detection okay you can use unsupervised learning so this is actually called as anomaly detection anomaly detection or outlier detection out layer detection okay so in this technique if there is a point where you know you have uh, you have values see if you see here 100 200 150 190 200 210 but here you will see uh, 1700 this is actually unusual data unusual data if your system identifies unusual data automatically it uh, actually uh, acts on this data and tells to us it may send sms okay uh, water consumption today is 1700 is there any repair or leakage in the pipe or any leakage in the pipe so this can be easily identified by using this anomaly detection so anomaly detection also comes under unsupervised learning okay so all of you can understand uh, in english right if you are having any trouble in understanding english please let me know so that uh, we will uh, help you okay right so next step is reinforced learning so we'll uh, learn this tomorrow okay so uh, i hope uh, you understood today a few basics okay we were able to cover okay so tomorrow we'll be learning about uh, reinforced learning and uh, we'll start a basic machine learning algorithms okay like uh, we will see uh, algorithms in regression okay and then later we will see algorithms in classification okay clear clear all of you if you have any doubts or anything you want to share you can share here yeah i'll be finishing this class now if you have any doubts please let me know so now uh, i am open for questions or doubts to clarify So, so Grishma, uh, Megana, Kiran, Manasa, Rudvi, Rajalakshmi, Sridipti, Sriram, Vinay. So if you have any doubts, please let me know. Uh, I will answer your question. Yes, Kiran. So uh, you will get the material. Okay. So I will be uh, sending videos. Okay. Uh, recorded video will be available of the class. At the same time, you will be given some material to read. Uh, this PPT also will be provided to you. Okay, and then some references will also be given to you so that you can refer uh, at your own pace. Okay, so I'll be adding you uh, in the Google Classroom where you'll be provided all the data. Okay, so you can access all the material in Google Classroom. 
okay so once you become uh, the participant for this class uh, i'll be giving that uh, you know uh, to you okay today i'll be uploading all the cl uh, class material uh, okay so you can access in that uh, portal okay all of you please access in the google classroom thank you all thank you so i'll be waiting for questions still if you have any question please let me know rishma do you have any question And uh, Prudvi, uh, here I know for doing projects, you'll be doing individually. Okay, so we are explaining everything. So projects will be solved in the classroom itself. Okay, and you'll be given another project of the same type to do at your home. Okay, so that will be easy. If you want to work in a group, you can work. Okay, if for example, if there are friends who are you know joining with you you can collaborate with them and you can solve uh, the projects that can be very good thing so if those who uh, don't have laptop can collaborate with your friend and you can use uh, a virtual uh, you know computing virtual uh, network computing uh, application vnc vnc is a very good application uh, i will show you initially you can use mobile phone because mobile phone also you can run a python code android phones ios phones has its own python ids i will tell you how to write python code in you know android phones also you can use web id or you can use android id also okay i will tell you so there are different ids available so you can use all them okay right if you don't have laptop don't worry but i suggest you to collaborate with your friend okay it is important so that you can log in from your mobile phone into their computer and you can work in their computer through your mobile phone okay uh, in this course we are uh, going to have total 10 projects remember we are going to have 10 projects and along with the 10 projects we'll be giving uh, assignments also okay the projects as assignments where you'll be uh, solving them at your home okay so uh, there are 10 projects i'll be showing you what are the 10 projects give me your number i will be sending you rajalakshmi what are the projects we are going to cover in this class okay right so uh, any question still any question please let me know okay rajalakshmi i'll be uh, sending you to this whatsapp number okay right Yes, uh, Sri Ganesh. Yes, Sri Ganesh. Uh, your question is correct. That is true. That is true. Yeah, we are going to discuss about this, uh, Sri Ganesh, tomorrow uh, about details. Okay. Uh, tomorrow we have the same concept. Okay, Sri Ganesh. Okay. Right. Okay, I'll be closing the session uh, for today. So, if you have any. Uh, questions please let me know because a uh, few of you came uh, new to this class so because uh, as you are new so i want to answer uh, more questions today right so i'll be close the session thank you thank you all so uh, i'll see you tomorrow